This is March Ridge, and today, after spending the last 91 days locked in Rosewood, I'm finally leaving. The PZ Wiki tells me March Ridge is a gated military town, with one building in particular that could hold the key to my endgame goals. We will discuss that building soon, but first we need to actually make it there in one piece. Welcome to episode 7 of Rosewood Takeover. So as you saw from the brief introduction, today I'm leaving Rosewood for the first time to head on the road to March Ridge. Before I leave though, I need to decide what items are travelling with me and what are going to be staying back at base. I've decided to spend the day getting ready to move out today. Firstly I harvested all the crops that were ready on the outside farm and I sacked them up and chucked them in the back of the vehicle so we've got some food to take with us. I loaded up a couple of useful items into the truck such as some emergency gas cans, hand torches and batteries. I then grabbed a load of hand axes from the cupboard as these will be the weapon of choice to level up my axe skill. After loading the fanny packs with all the meds I needed I grabbed all of the available VHS tapes from downstairs and sat in the living room till 2am in the morning watching them. Once once they were all done and I gained all the additional XP, I headed to bed ready to hit the road once I woke up on day 93. Day 93 couldn't have been a worse day to travel. We were struck with thunder and lightning and with no direct safe house at March Ridge, going out in this would have been a recipe for the disaster. I decided to spend the day crafting some spears for no apparent reason, reading through the crafting journal and washing myself ready to go back out on day 94. As I woke at 1am on day 94 and the rain was still coming down, I took some more sleeping tablets and set an alarm on my watch for 8am. As I arose from the noise of my alarm and headed out to turn off the generator, I realised the weather was just as bad today as it was yesterday. I did make the decision though that we were going to go for it, so I transcribed the journal, grabbed the car and hit the road. It feels really bad to be leaving this place, I mean my whole project zombie experience is here, but if I want to continue on with the journey, now is the right time. The visibility on the roads were terrible, and my worry is that it's here to stay with it already being October in game. I managed to find my way onto the main road, and now it was just a straight shoot all the way down to March Ridge. My aim for today is to get in and head to the southwest corner, hopefully dropping the car and finding the nearest house to base up for the time being. I have literally no idea what I'm walking into, but it's going to get very exciting. It took me a whole five minutes to get down that road. With little to no issues, it really shows how big the map is when you venture out for the first time. As I arrived at the turn for the front gate, I started to realise just how busy this place is. The further I got in, the more Zeds that appeared. And at one point, I did debate on turning back. I managed to get my foot down and make it to our destination, but it wasn't as clear as I expected it to be. I was greeted as soon as I got out of the car, and in the worst conditions possible, I began to fight my way through the Zeds that were here. Once it was clear, I headed over the fence in hopes that it was clear again, luckily just a single Z to deal with, and after seeing that the front street was quite busy, I decided to head back to the rear door and head in. Luckily, there were no Zeds inside. I found a good amount of ammo in the first house, and decided to craft some sheep ropes so I could create an escape rope should the Zeds break in. What I didn't realise is that I needed a nail to attach it to the window for him, so after a trip back to the car for the carpentry equipment, we managed to get it put in. I spent the rest of the day moving furniture from around the house to the front door. I didn't know if it will help, but if they do break in, hopefully it'll give me some time to escape. After a long day, I put my head down for some sleep, ready to carry on clearing this area tomorrow, but for now, welcome to March Ridge. Day 95 got off to a great start as I began clearing the large group of Zeds in the front street. This all went downhill when my partner came into the office to say night and made me jump out of my skin. I managed to get the game paused just as the Zed lent in to bite me, and when I resumed, it was a laceration to the neck and survival by the skin of my teeth. I spent the majority of the day sitting in the bedroom tending to the wound, and after dinner, I headed back out to to clear the remaining Zeds in the group. I began looting up the houses in the block where I based up. We found more ammo for the collection and as it approached late evening, the block was clear. Hopefully tomorrow turns out a better day. On day 96 we were back out early doors to kill a few Zeds lurking around outside. I know that some of you have mentioned the Zeds pushed to my area, but every day there seems to be a few more just show up outside. I cleared around the rear of the properties across the road, found a load more food, medical supplies and even more ammo. While we're on the topic of ammo, let's talk about what we want to do in March Ridge and why we're here. You see there are now four phases between now and the end of the series. Obviously if you've been following along since episode 1, I want to get March Ridge clear as it's part of my starting region. Phase one of our plans is to loot the military apartments. As I mentioned in the intro, the wiki tells me this building is good for weapons and ammo, and this will be the key to me finishing phases 2 through to 4. So after finding myself a new trusty crowbar, clearing this side of the street and taking on another large group, I decided to go back to base to drop off a backpack of loot. For the remainder of the evening I cleared as many Zeds as I could from around the next block of apartments. After clearing around the back, I spotted a large number in the street, and decided to head around the other side to lure them into smaller groups. I mentioned it in the last episode, but the confidence is beginning to rise, but I do remember that one fatal misclick or a lapse in concentration 
and I'm dead again. After the bulk of the street was cleared, it was getting late, so I headed to bed, ready to go again on day 97. On day 97, I continued on with clearing the surrounding area of Zeds and going house to house on the lookout for more ammo. I needed a way to be quicker instead of returning back to the safe house with loot, so I reverted back to the trusty drop the loot in the road technique. We managed to kill a good amount of Zeds today, but I have no idea what I was doing here just walking up to this Zed. Another injury because I just didn't swing the crowbar, but on we go. We got all the way across to the houses in the second row and found so much ammo in the process. We continued looting in the dark and before bed we did one last trip back to the loot pile and got some rest. On day 98 I proceeded on with clearing the final apartment block. I'd started a new loot pile on the road with more guns and ammo then moved on to the houses on the other side. I cleared the majority of them killing numerous zeds in the process before coming across this group all locked together in the toilet. I then moved on to the next street which was a little busier than the last. I decided to work my way down the street killing all the lurking zeds before beginning the looting of the houses. I came across this large group lurking around the side of this house so I decided to use the fence strategy to kill them off. Obviously for me this doesn't work, the clean hit missed somehow. I was then knocked back and ended up being bitten by the Zed on his feet. And yes, I checked the health status, it was bitten. In panic, I decided to kill off the Zeds that were following and head to the car. I don't know how long the turning time is, but if I can grab all the loot, head back to Rosewood and transcribe the journal, at least it's not all lost. As I arrived back to the car, I hopped in and headed to the first safe house. I used the emergency rope for the first time to climb into the back bedroom, grabbed all the loot and headed to the next spot. After collecting everything, I hit the road and headed back towards Rosewood, and after five minutes, we were back at base. I unloaded the vehicle, put the stacks of ammo we'd collected into the locker, transcribed the journal, and then headed out into to the road to finish the job. There it is, two months and 12 days, my Project Zomboid record. One small mistake and just 98 kills short of my first thousand. But again, this is what the journal's for, for me to carry on and go again. So as always, we were straight back into it. I changed up the perks a little this time around. I took the underweight instead of overweight, got rid of inconspicuous and took conspicuous. I dropped eagle-eyed, which I may regret, and took strong and wakeful. I'm sure I will have a bad trait somewhere, but let's get back to it on day 99. As I spawned back in on day 99, 99 I was back at the police station. My one concern now is that a bulk of the Zeds have now resurfaced at Rosewood after my death. I got back to the fire station, read the journal to bring back all of my XP, then I geared back up with some loot I'd left behind. But as it was nearly 6pm I decided to stay for the night and have a fresh start tomorrow. Man it sucks to die again, like I feel the series should now be done with. It just feels like a failure. But let's get back on the road. The worst part is, I've watched the footage back numerous times, and I'm sure that that hit should have connected, but after the first initial knockdown, I should have backed off and reset myself. It's another harsh learning curve. So instead of driving directly to the usual March Ridge spot, I decided to drive to the military apartments first to have a quick look around March Ridge. And my god, there are so many Zeds. I mean, I'm seriously thinking, what have I got myself into here? How the hell I'm going to kill them all is beyond me. Look at the size of the groups. This is going to be a really harsh learning curve the amount that were inside the military apartments as well but here after driving around a few streets i had it back to where we left off this is when this happened I've been here for two minutes and I'm nearly dead again. I decided if I'm going to make a stand here, the next few days I need to solely focus on killing as many Zeds as possible, so I got to work. Zed after Zed fell, all the way through the day. I managed to land myself a double barrel shotgun with a couple of cases of ammo, which I expect I will have to use at some point. I made my way towards the main road and as soon as I hit the crossroads, there were more. 39 kills so far today and I'm not finished yet. I kept going, right the way through till 9pm. For some reason, as soon as it gets dark, I'm absolutely terrified and want to go to sleep. It probably wasn't a good idea taking the wakeful turret here, but after a busy day, I finished on 56 kills. We woke up at 3am on day 101. Again, the fear of the dark sets in, but I headed out like an idiot anyway. I decided to head to a couple of Zeds in the street to warm up for the day, but as I began to kill them off, a door on the street broke and another group came flying out. I managed to train them in the street and with some deep concentration, I managed to kill them all off. I spent the time in the dark looting a couple of houses and once it was light enough, I headed towards the military apartments. Let's just say I don't get off this road today. All I did was continue on with killing Zeds. There were large groups that I continued to lure away and kill. I even managed some of the bigger groups, again concentrating on my swings and pushes when I needed to. The darkness and the rain didn't help, the visibility was poor, but I kept to the game plan. 
I had to break off for a couple of hours to get some rest, but once I was back to full fitness, I went back out to continue. Just look at the state of this road. There are bodies everywhere. As it hit 5pm, I became drowsy, and knowing about the 50% damage reduction, it was time to head back to a safe place and get some rest. Obviously, this didn't go to plan and there was more Zeds to kill, but once they were cleared, I looted the house and headed off to bed ready for day 102. So, on day 102, I forgot to hit the record button as I woke up. Obviously, me being me, I decided to click record whilst I was in the middle of the combat. Yes, bitten again. What an absolute ridiculous fail. So again, it's time to head for the car. This time though, I ran into some trouble. You see, I decided to park the car at the crossroads so I could run in and collect some bullets from this house. As I came back out to the car, I was met by this small horde walking towards me and at this point, I thought I was screwed. But I did manage to give them the old loop-de-loop -loop and get in the car and get the hell out of this hellhole. Two deaths in this episode and I think I've finally had a real introduction to how hard this game is. Some of you have mentioned in the comments about how good I've become, but I hope this is a stern reminder that I still have a lot to learn. As I head back to base, I will say my thank yous as usual. We've just gone over the 500 subs mark, which is amazing. The push is now for the big 1000. I hope you've all enjoyed watching me struggle my way through this episode, and if you did, hit the white subscribe button. I thought I was finally coming towards the end of this series, but it looks like there's a lot more left to do. It's been a tough episode, but I thought it was good to give you a real look at the struggles I've encountered. The real question is now, do I have what it takes to come back? Thanks for watching, I'm JPGZ, love you bye.